Live seafood. It's a must-have on the menu of any rated restaurant or special banquet in Hong Kong and southern China. Hong Kong imports about 18,000 tons of live reef fish every year. But bringing this prized catch from the reef to the table comes at a high cost. Most of this freshly caught fish come from countries like Indonesia. Heru Pernomo has been exporting live grouper and coral trout for 15 years. Several times a week, his boats bring in tons of fish from the country's eastern islands to this port in Bali. Workers quickly transport them into trucks. In less than 12 hours, these fish will be packed and flown to Hong Kong. Business is brisk, but he says the fish stock in Indonesia is dwindling by about 30 percent a year. We just think about the profit without any, any thinking about the future and sustainable. So it's began around 10 years ago that I found declining stock from the from the, from this trade. Most of it was lost to overfishing and destructive methods like the use of dynamite and cyanide. The use of cyanide began in the Philippines in the 1960s, mostly for the aquarium fish trade. It spread to other fishing nations in the Pacific to meet the demands of the highly profitable live reef fish trade. Fishermen stun the fish by squirting the cyanide into the corals, making them easier to catch. The cyanide also kills smaller fish and other organisms needed to keep the reefs healthy. Exploitive fishing has destroyed the corals and depleted fish stock in most of western and central Indonesia. Fishermen are now forced to move farther east. Ten years ago, Heru decided it was time to work with conservationists and help make the trade more sustainable. We just buy a fish from hook and line. We try to train our fishermen how to use the hook and line. And then now uh, we have around 4,500 fishermen in our group. They work in the middle Indonesia and eastern Indonesia and it's all free from cyanide. Educating fishermen wasn't easy, but his company set up the rules. No cyanide fishing, no blasting, no overfishing. Fish weighing less than 600 grams must be released, allowing them to spawn eggs at least once in their lifetime. The fishermen catch less, but can demand higher prices for their high quality fish. Changing something is difficult, but uh, because our business it depend 100% to the coral reef environment. Even it's very difficult, but we have to try to do this. When you lose the fish, it will take more than 20 years to recover. And sometimes no more, they're gone. It's like... Heru is a rare kind of trader. Conservationists say other players can take the same approach to slow down fishing and let the fish replenish themselves naturally. The market that this particular grouper industry serves in Hong Kong and in China, are they paying the real price of you know, what this industry actually is taking out of the ecosystem? And, and it's not that way. So you have to consider that perhaps the consumption of these high predator species in China and in Hong Kong needs to reduce. It needs to come back to a level that is more in line with what the ecosystem can produce. The question consumers need to ask is how much does that live fish really cost? Pauline Chu, CNN, Hong Kong.